Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where we are always striving to find the most obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. I'm Lynn. This is my best friend and husband, Mark, and we're from Telford in Shropshire. Couple number two. Hi, my name's Isabel. This is my father, David, and we've come from Bagshot in Surrey. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Alan. This is Cliff. We're cousins from North Shields, NE29. And finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Anne. This is Sue, and we work together in Nottingham. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that only leaves one more person for me to introduce, currently on parole after a punch-up with three of the eggheads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Daphne fights dirty. It's my pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hiya. Uh... Hi, everybody. Hiya. Are you well? Very well. Uh, now, question one today yeah. is a slightly awkward one. Sometimes on questions, uh, things come up where it's people we know personally, mm. isn't it? And question one today, we know every single answer. We're very personally acquainted with everybody who's an answer. It's going to be a little bit awkward. Some of our history is going to have to come out in round one today. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, thanks very much indeed. <laughs> now, all our questions on pointers have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Everyone's looking to find a pointless answer, of course. That's an answer that none of our people could give. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Rob and John won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. So if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, in this first round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there's to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the high score at the end of the round will be heading home. OK, our first category today is... Fashion. Fashion. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question concerns... There we go, supermodels <laughs> and their first names. Yeah. Oh, could be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like a room you walk in, you think, oh, I've been out with everyone here. That's what, that's what these boards are going to be like. On each pass, we're going to show you the surnames of seven supermodels and their first initial. We need you to give us their first name, please. There's going to be 14 supermodels to name at home. Very, very best of luck. So we are looking for the first names of these supermodels. And our first board reads like this. We have got... A. Weck, H. Clum, M. Helvin, C. Schiffer, J. Shrimpton, D. Lee, and K. Moss. I'll go through those one last time. A. Weck, H. Clum, M. Helvin, C. Schiffer, J. Shrimpton, D. Lee, and K. Moss. Now then, Lynn and Mark, you all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Lynn, welcome to the show. Thank you. From Shropshire. Yes. What do you do up in Shropshire, Lynn? I'm a card maker, so I teach card making. Do you write little poems to go in the cards as well, Lynn? Sometimes, in the past I have, for friends and family. For uh, yeah. friends and family, yes. quite right. Yes. OK, now, and when you're not doing that, obviously, supermodels yes. occupy quite a lot of your time. Yes, yeah, you can see I know a lot about supermodels. Mm. Kate Moss. Kate Moss, says Lynn, Kate Moss. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many people said Kate Moss. A lot. 95 people <laughs> said Kate Moss. Wow. Well done. That's a big score. Better than 100. It is. And as Mark said, well done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to welcome Mark and Lynn. I wonder if you're going to win. That's my, uh, <laughs> my little greetings card uh, for you there. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, OK, Isabel. Welcome to the show. What do you do, Isabel? Um, I'm a marketing executive for an events company. Excellent. What do you like getting up to in your spare time, Isabel? Um, I'm big into my films, watch a lot of films, watch a lot of TV series, read a lot. Meet okay. my friends, the usual stuff. Good, usual stuff. Now, on the, on the sliding scale of 1 to 100, how pleased are you with this as a category? I was when it first came up. I'm now really annoyed at myself because there's a couple on there that I'm sure that when you say them afterwards, I'm, I will know. But I'm going to have to go for an obvious one. OK, um, you're going to go for one of the ones that Richard has stepped out with? Or, uh, <laughs> yes. or one of mine? Um, 
I'm going to go for Heidi Klum. Oh, one of mine. One of mine. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Heidi Klum. Let's see if it's right, Heidi Klum. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It is right. 75, another high score. Uh, yes, another big score, isn't it, for uh, Heidi Klum? She's married to Seal. He proposed by he, he chartered a helicopter and flew her to, a, to an ice cave in Whistler. Um, she walked into the ice cave and there was a bearskin rug and he had champagne and he sang her a song on a bearskin rug inside a specially built ice cave. Did not last, so yeah. goes to show. Uh, anyway, now then, Alan, welcome to the show. Uh, where are you from, Alan? I'm from North Shield, Tyne and Weir. Any 29? Any 29, that's the postcode. That's your postcode, good. Very precious in North Shields about the postcode. And the number of your house? <laughs> 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 oh, could we do that thing? We quite often have a lot of fun um, asking people their PIN numbers. If you could just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Alan, um, what do you do? I work for the Rugby Football Union as a training manager. Is rugby a, a big hobby of yours? Yeah, it is. It's, it's uh, you know, having a job which revolves around your, your hobby is great. So, yeah, yeah. Really, really passionate about the sport. Good stuff. OK, now then, supermodels. My second biggest passion, actually. <laughs> what are you going to go for? Um, I only know, well, I think I know one, Claudia Schiffer. Claudia Schiffer says, Alan, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Claudia. Well, 95 are... Ooh, 89. Say what you like. People know their supermodels. They don't really they? do know their supermodels, yeah. don't they? Especially if you give them the surname and the first initial of their first name. Yeah. <laughs> they really know. Sue, remind us what happened last time. You are our only returning pair. Well, the Germans got the better of me last time. Yes. And it was the Olympic Games, Summer Olympic Games, and I, I didn't know the years. So I had a guess and it was wrong. Well, that was round two. Mm -hmm. We've got to hope you go a lot further this time. Now then, supermodels. Can you get lower than 75? Well, there's, there's two left that I know, and that's Marie Helvin and Jean Shrimpton. So I'm going to go for, because that's more my time, Jean Shrimpton. Jean Shrimpton. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Jean Shrimpton. It's right. Well, there we are. You've gone past our lowest score so far. 30. Very well done indeed, Sue. It's a great score. 30 for Jean Shrimpton. Very good answer. Sometimes referred to as the, the world's first supermodel. She runs and owns a hotel in Penzance now, Jean Shrimpton, if you're looking for somewhere to stay. You were right as well about Marie Helvin. Actually, would have been a better score, Marie Helvin. Would have scored you 18. Up the top there is the, uh, the South Sudanese supermodel, Alec Weck. Would have scored four points. Well done if you said that. And a supermodel from the 40s and 50s at the bottom, Dorian Lee. It's a terrific answer if you got that one point. It's the best answer up there. Thanks very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at those scores as they stand. 30, the best score by some way, Sue. Very well done. Then 75, our next best score, Isabel and David, then up to 89, where we find Alan and Cliff, and then 95, Lynn and Mark. Now, Mark, we're going to discover how much you know about supermodels, but I'm hoping it's a lot. Best of luck. We need a low score from you to keep you in the game. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, let's put seven more supermodels on the board, and here they come. We have got M. Kerr, C. Turlington, C. Teagues, E. McPherson, T. Petitz, N. Campbell and A. Colby. I'll read those all one last time. M. Kerr, C. Turlington, C. Teagues, E. McPherson, T. Petitz, N. Campbell and A. Colby. Now, remember, we're looking for the first names of these supermodels, and, Anne, you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Um, what do you make of this board, Anne? Um, I don't know so many on this one as I did the last. Yeah, Unfortunately. It's a bit there's a couple, well, there's three or four, but um, a couple will be well known, I think. Um, so I'm going to go for Cheryl Teagues. Cheryl Teagues. Cheryl Teagues. Cheryl Teagues. Well, the high scorers on 95 are Mark and Lynn. If you want to avoid becoming the new high scorers, you want to score 64 or less. There's your red line. Cheryl Teagues. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Absolutely right. You are through to the next round. Very well done. Excellent. Seven. <laughs> That's a fantastic answer, and Lovely low score. 37, your total. Terrific work on podium four there. Yeah, huge in the 70s, Cheryl T's, a US supermodel. Now then, Cliff. 
Cliff, do you also live in NE29? No, I live in NE26. Uh. <laughs> By and large, we say people in NE26 are a bit less precious about their postcode than... No. Uh, no, really? <laughs> OK. Which is the better? NE29. All right. <laughs> OK, now then, Cliff, remember we are looking for the first names of these supermodels. You're on 89 at the moment, Mark and Lynn are on 95. Obviously, if you could score five or less, that would be brilliant, but... Uh, Don't it. That is possibly doubtful. But we need a nice low score from you. Really poor for me, this, uh, Ellie McPherson, I don't know. You're going to say Ellie McPherson. Can I just ask you to spell that? E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. E-L-L-E. Let's see if Ellie McPherson is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said that. It is right. 83. <laughs> 83 takes your total up to 172 for Ellie or L McPherson. Yeah, L McPherson, but you, you spelt it right. The Australian model known as the body. Her real name is Eleanor Gow. Amazing. Learn something new every day, don't you? Yeah, you do. Uh, now, David. Hello. David, you're on 75. The highest scorers are now Cliff and Alan on 172. 96 or less is enough to see you through. David, what do you do? I'm a Church of England vicar. Very good indeed. And in your, in your spare time, of course, there's no such thing as spare time for a vicar. Your vocation is 24-7, of course, but let's pretend you had some spare time. What would you like to do with it? Uh, probably go for a walk in the countryside with the binoculars, do a bit of bird watching. OK, right up your street, I know, supermodels. So... Look at this board, David. The only one I know is Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. OK, one up from the bottom, Naomi Campbell. There is your red line. It's nice and high. It's going to need to be, I think. Let's find out. Naomi Campbell, is it right? How many people said it? 94. Very well done. <laughs> you are through to the next round. 169, your total. Very well done, David. Another big score. It's bad news for anyone at home who thought that was Nicky Campbell, I'm afraid. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, now you have to go back to your congregation and explain you got through the first round on a supermodel question. This <laughs> could be worse. And finally, Mark. Hello. How are you feeling about this board, Mark? Not good. Not good. I knew more on the first board. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, <laughs> word for fun, Mark, should we just go through it and you can maybe just guess at some of them? Talk <laughs> us through your thinking on M. Kerr, for example. Mary. Do you want to have a crack at yeah, Turlington and Chrissy Petits? Turlington, um, Tia Petitz, um, Annette Colby. Which of those do you think you're going to go? I'm going to try for Chrissy Turlington. Chrissy Turlington. Okay. Well, here comes your red line. Again, it's quite high. Let's see if Chrissy Turlington is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Chrissy. No oh, bad luck, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> bad luck, Mark. You're going to kick yourself when you know what it is. Uh, unfortunately, an incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 points. That takes your total up to 195, I'm sorry. It was very, very close, Mark. You've obviously heard the name somewhere before, uh, but it's Christy, I'm afraid. We couldn't accept Christy, so it is a different name. It would have scored 39 points as well. It would have been a terrific answer. Um, M. Kerr, not Mary, I'm afraid. That would have been a good guess. It's actually Miranda Kerr. Would have scored you 19 points. Right at the bottom there, it is Anita Colby. Two points, a terrific answer. And it is Tatiana Patitz. They call her the forgotten supermodel, which is why she only scored one point. Thanks very much. OK, so at the end of our first round, I'm afraid our losing pair with a high score of 195, Mark and Lynn. Uh, yes, you were the victim of that round, Mark. That was a tough, tough round. That second board particularly tough. But good news is we'll see you again next time, though. We'll look forward to that very much indeed. Uh, Mark and Lynn, thanks so much for playing. Great contestants. Thank, Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> now only three pairs remain, and obviously at the end of this round, another pair will be leaving us. Well, and Sue, fabulous work in that last round, by a, a long, long way, the lowest scorers. But then you're our returning pair, so uh, we would have expected nothing less. <laughs> uh, Cliff and Alan, well done, you're through. David and Isabel, very well done indeed. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for this second round is words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in R-A-G-E as they could. Words ending R-A-G-E, Richard. 
We are looking for any word which has its own entry in the Oxford Dictionary of English that ends with the letters R, A, G, E. Please, as always, no hyphenated words, no proper nouns, anything like that. There's about 45 or 50 words in the Oxford Dictionary of English. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. So then, David. I think I'll go for suffrage. OK, suffrage. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said it. Suffrage. It's right. Very well done indeed. Three for suffrage. Straight in there, no mucking about there, was it? Uh, yeah, the right to vote in political election suffrage. Terrific answer. Good start. Cliff. Strange. Strange. OK, strange. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said strange. Bad luck, Cliff. I'm afraid an incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 points. Yeah, sorry, Cliff, that's A-N-G-E at the end of strange, so yeah. I can't accept it. No, OK, now then, Sue. So we're looking for words ending in R-A-G-E. I'm going to go for courage. Courage. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said courage. <laughs> 42 for courage. <laughs> Ooh, that's high. 42 for courage. Safe and sound there. Yeah, it's easy to think of words that end AGE, isn't it? And it's the mm. RAGE. I mm. bet plenty of people at home are shouting things out and they think, no, hold on. I only say that because I was just thinking of a word that ends AGE. Mm. Uh, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Uh, three, the best score of that pass, David and Isabel. Very well done. Up to 42, where we find Sue and Anne. And then up, I'm afraid, to 100, where we find Cliff and Alan. Well, anything could happen in the next pass. I have made a terrible mistake on this round in the past, so uh, oh, I know how have. easily yeah. it can be done. No, very, very easily. We're to do words ending IND. That's right, isn't it? Yes. We're to do words ending IND, and Zander always likes to have an answer at the end of the round. And he was very excited this time. He said, how much, what would I score for befriend? <laughs> See, it's exactly the same. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, now then. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second place please take their places at the podium? OK, now, Anne. Anne, you're on 42. The high scorers are Alan and Cliff on 100. If you can score 57 or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. Well, I can think of a couple. One's... I'm sure it's right, but I've got the courage to say it. Um, I'm going to go for... <clears throat> Enrage. Enrage. Enrage, says Anne. Let's see. Here is your red line. Below that, through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many people said enrage. Very well done. 29. 29, taking your total up to 71. I might ask you at the end of the round, Anne, what your, what your risky one would have been. We'll try it out. Alan, you've got a bit of a mountain to climb here, I'm afraid. I've... I've got one. I'm not sure whether it is actually English, though. I'm going to go for it. I am going to go for entourage. Entourage, says Alan. Well, there's no red line for you as you're the high scorers. But let's see how many people said entourage. It's absolutely right. <laughs> Ten. That's a good score. Sadly, it's not enough, though. 110 is your total. Yeah, good answer, good score. Not, not quite good enough, I'm afraid. Your entourage has grown crazily since our first episode of this. You used to just have four or five. Now there's, like, 30 or 40 people with you all the time. Yeah, well... You've got two guys to do your eyebrows, one for right eyebrow, one for left eyebrow. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, a time, that's a time consideration. That's not a... Do you think? Yeah, well, You've yeah. You've got one guy to carry your umbrella and the other guy to put your umbrella up. <laughs> do you think yep. that might be pushing it a bit? I'll look into it. Now, uh, Isabel. <laughs> So we're looking for words ending in R-A-G-E. The scores are 71 to Anne and Sue, 110 to Alan and Cliff, and you are on three. So, yes, even if you score 100 points, you're still through to the head-to-head. -head. Okay, this is the good fine. news. That's fine. Um, I'm going to go for barrage. Barrage, says Isabel. No red line for you as you're already through, but let's see how many people said barrage. It's right. <laughs> Oh, 
15. 15 takes your total up to 18. Yeah, as in there are a barrage of people in Zonda's entourage. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a good answer. Anne, what was your, your risky one going to be? I was thinking of borage. Is it a herb or something? Uh, it is a herb, yeah. would have scored yeah. you four points. Would have been a terrific answer. I was also going to say, um, David, you would have scored fewer points uh, than you got if you'd said vicarage. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Would have, scored, would have scored you two points. Would have been, uh, would have been a great answer. Now, Zander, do you I've, have an answer? I've got one. Does it definitely end R-A-G-E? Well, I think it does. I think, it, I, I think um, arbitrage... ..is a pointless answer. Oh! So, pointless yeah. answer. Very well done. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers here. See if you've got any of these at home. Arbitrage. Yeah. How about that? Uh, Cooperage. Demarage, which is, you know what a demarage is, right? You're, I imagine a fair amount of that will be going on if I have to reduce my entourage. <laughs> Absolutely, because it's the fee that you have to pay to the captain of a chartered ship if you fail to uh, exactly. unload all of his uh, yeah. cargo in time. Yeah. Demarage. Let's take a look at some more. Uh, effleurage. You have an effleurage massage artist, because that's the person who does it. It's like it's a massage. That's yeah. what Helen does. In your entourage. Right, OK. <laughs> uh, harbourage, porterage would have uh, been a pointless answer. Well done if you said that. Quarterage, steerage and teacherage, as in uh, that's essentially how old your teacher is. <laughs> it's your, it's your... <laughs> uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of that round, I'm afraid our losing pair with a high score of 110, it's Alan and Cliff. I'm really sorry, we have to say goodbye to you now. You made it to round two. You got through supermodels, all of them. <laughs> uh, but we have to say goodbye now, but we'll see you again next time. Uh, thanks very much for playing. Alan and Cliff. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's time for the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Anne and Sue, David and Isabel. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at one. Now, to decide which pair it's going to be going through to the final and playing for that money, you are now going to go head to head. The difference is you are now allowed to confer. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Now then, Anne and Sue. Brilliant. Last time, round two, you went out. Yeah. This time, you've sailed through to the head to head and you're our lower scoring pair. Uh, David and Isabel, some lovely low scoring from you. Uh, very good play all round and you can pool your resources in this round. So, uh, yes, anything could happen. I think it's going to be very close. Best of luck. We're going to play the head to head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question and it concerns man-made arches. Man-made arches, Richard. Mm, we're going to show you five pictures now of man-made arches. We need you to tell us in which cities you would find these five. Pick the most obscure, you'll get the point. OK, thanks very much. Let's reveal our five man-made arches, and here they come. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are, five man-made arches. Now then, Anne and Sue, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Not sure, really. Okay. But we're going to have a stab at B. Um, it might be the Brandenburg Gate. In which city? <laughs> oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, Berlin then, won't it? Be? Berlin. Berlin. Perhaps. OK. B, Berlin, say Anne and Sue. B, Berlin. David and Isabel. Well, the only one that I definitely know, well, I hope I know, is C, which I think is Paris. It's the actually up in Paris. You thought B was Berlin. I think so, yeah. So. I think E is Sydney, but I'm not sure. I don't, a, a and D, I have no idea. I think, I think we ought to take a punt on E. Yeah. Okay. Okay. E Sydney. E Sydney. So we have B Berlin and we have E Sydney. Anne and Sue said Berlin for B. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Berlin. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Berlin. Not Berlin. Now, David and Isabel have said that E is Sydney. All you have to be is correct to win this point. Let's find out. Are you correct? 
No, you're not. Two incorrect answers, which means after one question, you're still drawn <laughs> nil nil. Richard. Yeah, you would have got the point if you just said Paris for the Arc de Triomphe, because you're absolutely right. C was Paris. Would have scored 53 points. Now, you both uh, both teams thought B was Berlin. It's not, it's a pointless answer, and it's in Brussels. A is in New York, that's in Washington Square. Would have scored you nine points. D, what someone might have gone for, it's in Baghdad. Would have scored you 13 points. The fists are modelled on Saddam Hussein's own hands. And E, not Sydney, it is St Louis. Four points that would have scored. OK, thanks very much. So here comes your second question. Nobody has won a point yet, so it's still a wide-open field. David and Isabel, you go first this time. It concerns... astrology. <laughs> astrology. <laughs> Richard. We're going to give you five clues now to facts about astrology. Can you give us the most obscure answer? OK, thanks very much. Here are our five clues, and they are as follows. Astrologer who appeared on Strictly Come Dancing in 2011. Traditionally, the first sign coming between Pisces and Taurus. Title of the 1967 stage musical featuring the song Aquarius. The astrologer, born Margaret Lake, used to appear regularly on the National Lottery programme. Mythological creature which often represents Sagittarius. I'll read those all one last time. Astrologer who appeared on Strictly Come Dancing in 2011. Traditionally, the first sign coming between Pisces and Taurus. Title of the 1967 stage musical featuring the song Aquarius. The astrologer, born Margaret Lake, used to appear regularly on the National Lottery programme. And the mythological creature which often represents Sagittarius. There we are. Five clues to facts about astrology. David and Isabel, you go first. We'll go for the title of the 1967 stage musical, and that's, I think, is Hair. Hair, say David and Isabel. Hair. Anne and Sue, talk us through the rest of the board. Well, it was Russell Grant who appeared in Strictly. Um, I think it might be uh, Aries, Aries. Between Pisces and Taurus. Mystic Meg. Was on the lottery programme. And he's sort archer. of like a sort of archer. Yeah, yeah, sort of thing. Which one do you want to go, to go for? for? Yes. No, yeah. you, no, you no, pick. No, 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 you no, pick. No, 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 no. Honestly, go on. No, no. No, no, no I'm no. not picking. I've got Brandenburg <laughs> Gate right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for Aries. Aries. <laughs> Aries. Now, David and Isabel went for hair, Anna Sue for Aries. Let's see. Hair, is that right? How many people said it if it is? Hair is right. 35. 35 for hair. Now, Anne and Sue have gone for Aries. Traditionally, the first sign coming between Pisces and Taurus. Aries, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. Spot on. Is it going to be 35? Oh, it's going to be close. 39 for Aries. <laughs> Very well done, David and Isabel. After two questions, you are up 1-0. Yes, they were all quite high-scoring answers in this round, actually. Uh, you were right about Russell Grant. It would have scored you too many points. It would have scored you a 47. The astrology, you're right again, was Mystic Meg, but uh, it's actually the biggest answer up there, 56. Uh, and the mythological creature is the centaur. And that would have scored you 18 points. Thanks very much indeed. So here comes your third question. Anne and Sue, you have to win this one to stay in the game. It concerns... Films adapted for the stage. Films adapted for the stage. Richard. We're going to show you the name of five films now which have been adapted into West End musicals, but we've taken out alternate letters. Can you fill in those letters and give us the most obscure? OK, let's reveal our five films adapted for the stage, and here they come. We have got H blank, I blank, S blank, R blank, Y, blank, I blank, T blank, R blank, C blank, F blank, O blank, L blank, O blank, E, blank A blank Y blank O blank P blank N blank and B blank L blank Y blank L blank I blank T. I'll read those again without the blanks. And we've got H I S R Y I T R C F O L O E A Y O P N and B L Y L I T. Anne and Sue, you go first this time. <laughs> Um, we're going to try the second one. We think it's Sister Act. Sister Act. Sister Act. Now then, David and Isabel, talk us through the board, if you can. Do you want to... You do, you do it. 
Um, the first one's Hairspray. The last one's Billy Elliot. But... Uh, third and fourth... I'm sure I'll kick myself once you say it, but I... I just can't put... can't put a name to them. Which one should we go for? I'd, um, Billy Elliot? We'll go, for, we'll go for Billy Elliot. You're gonna go for Billy Elliot. OK. So we have Sister Act, we have Billy Elliot. Anne and Sue said Sister Act. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. It's right. Three. Very, very well spotted. Sister Act. David and Isabel went for Billy Elliot. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said that. It's right. 72. It's not going to beat three, which means after three questions, you are absolutely even with one each. It's a very good answer. It's the best answer up there, um, Sister Act. And actually, Billy Elliot is the highest scoring answer up there. You would have been better off, still wouldn't have got the point, if you had said Hairspray, because it would have scored 31. Now, the other two, which you couldn't get, Xander, do you know who I you can see the two? bottom one. The bottom one is... Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Absolutely would have scored 11. The one in the middle, you can't see? Oh, Kevin Bacon is in the film. Oh, Footloose. Footloose, yeah. Would have there scored 14 points. Well done if you got all five of those. Thanks very much indeed. OK, here comes your fourth question. The decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for the jackpot. It concerns... James the <laughs> First. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> OK, James the First. Richard. We're going to show you five clues now to facts about James the First of England, also King of Scotland, of course. Can you give us the most obscure answer? OK, let's reveal our five clues to facts about James I. And here they come. We have got the century in which he became King of England, his regnal number as King of Scotland, the name of his wife, the name of the European war that broke out 15 years into his reign, and the name of his royal dynasty. I'll read those all one final time. The century in which he became King of England, his regnal number as King of Scotland, the name of his wife, the name of the European war that broke out 15 years into his reign, and the name of his royal dynasty. There we are, five clues to facts about James I. And David and Isabel, you go first this time. We'll go for the century in which he became king of England. That's the, I think, is the 17th century. The 17th century, say David and Isabel, the 17th century. Anne and Sue, the board is all yours. <laughs> My Talk us through it. <laughs> um, Not a chance. No, no, we're, no, we're at a bit of a, a standstill on this one, I'm afraid. Um, I, don't, yes, I have no idea, Stuart, yeah. Stuart, for the bottom one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stand. The name of his royal dynasty, Stuart. So we have the 17th century and we have Stuart as the name of his royal dynasty. So David and Isabel said the 17th century. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. It is right. <laughs> 24. <laughs> 24 for the 17th century. Now, Anne and Sue said Stuart. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Stuart. It's right. How far down is it going to go? Oh. 42. <laughs> 42, a good answer, though. But very well done, David and Isabel. After four questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Richard. Congratulations, David and Isabel. Well played. His regnal number as King of Scotland was... Do you know that one? Six. Yep, James VI. Absolutely would have scored you 33 points. The name of his wife was Anne of Denmark. 10 points that would have scored you. And the name of the European war that broke out 15 years into his reign, it's the best answer up there. It's a pointless answer. 30 years war. Very, very well done if you said that. Thanks very much indeed. So our losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, Anne and Sue, you've done so well throughout the show. Uh, fantastic performance, particularly in round one. Uh, but I'm afraid in the head-to-head -head you came up against David and Isabel. And let's face it, James I as well. <laughs> not a great subject for you. I no, think, not at all. Uh, sorry about that. But uh, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Anne and Sue, Thank lovely content. But for David and Isabel, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, David and Isabel. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy.
You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,000. <laughs> well, you've hardly put a foot wrong. <laughs> all show, it's been fantastic. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. First, though, you have to choose a category, and you can choose from these five options. They are athletics, authors, international <laughs> politics, 19th century theatre, pop music. Oh, no. Pop music is literally my dream round, but I know that I'm going to be on so much pressure if we choose pop music. Hang on, Isabel, it's literally your dream round. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you worrying about? It's not my dream round, that's the problem. Uh, pop music, it could be my era. In which case, we're sunk. Let's just hope it's 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it's 90s. OK, so you're going to go for pop music? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many best-selling singles in the UK as they could. Best-selling singles. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the title of any of the 50 best-selling singles in UK chart history. That's from the first chart in 1952 right through to 2012, please. So from 1952 through to October 2012, the 50 best-selling singles in the UK. Very, very best of luck. Where there are double A sides, we'll count both answers as separate answers. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,000 jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK. Um, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. OK. Uh, I think it's, all I can think of is stuff from the 90s that I know, so things that I... You know, number one for a long time. So yes, well, come up with something like, like that. Like, take, take that back for good. That yeah. was number one for ages. OK, try that. Um, <laughs> Fleetwood Mac Albatross was a hit twice. Hit single twice, so could be. Um, uh, obviously, this Brian Adams was uh, number one for a long, long time, but I think people will know that. People are going to say stuff like Spice Girls, and um, they'll take that as well. But... Oh, gosh. Mm, um, no. stuff like Robin Williams Angels, and that's going to be well known, I think. Oh. I think, do you think Peter... Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water, I think we'll go okay. for that. I think, I think that was okay. for a long time. Um, Ten seconds left. Oh, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I think we're going to go for those. Go for those ones. Okay, and, and take that as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you, you've arrived not entirely happily by the looks of things, no. but they sound like good answers to me. Uh, what are they? Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Okay. Albatross by Fleetwood Mac. Okay. And we'll go for Take That Back for Good. Take That Back for Good. Okay, so we were looking for the 50 best selling singles of all time in the UK. Those are your three answers. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? I'd say Albatross. Okay, yeah. Okay, Fleetwood Mac, Albatross. We'll put that last and your least likely. Take that. Take that back for good. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Back for Good, Bridge Over Troubled Water and Albatross. So we were looking for the best-selling singles in the UK. Back for Good was your first answer, the one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless. Now, remember, you only have to find one pointless answer to win that jackpot of £1,000. So let's find out how many people said Back for Good. Is it right? Is it pointless? Oh, no! Incorrect. Wow. So that tells us something. It didn't make it into the top 50. Uh, so, unfortunately, not a pointless answer there. But uh, two perfectly good answers still left on the board. Let's hope one of those will win you that jackpot. £1,000. David, what would you do with £1,000? Um, I think probably the first thing I'd do is... Split it. Well, we'll split 50 -50. it. We'll... <laughs> <laughs> My part, we'll probably go, go for... it. I'll probably book, book a table at a restaurant and take some friends and family and we'll just have a really nice meal, I think. Very That'd good. Be fun. Very nice. Isabel? I wouldn't do that with mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be paying for dinner. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> OK, well, we are looking for the best-selling... top 50 best-selling singles in the UK. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, oh. Bridge Over Troubled Water. Now, David, this is the first one you came up with. Yes. OK, well, it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot, so for £1,000, let's see how many people said Bridge Over Troubled Water. Oh, no! Another incorrect answer. Bridge Over Troubled Water didn't trouble the top 50 singles of all time. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot, which means everything is now riding on Albatross. 
you said this was your most confident shot at a pointless answer, so let's find out. For £1,000, is Albatross pointless? Is it correct? No bad luck! I'm so sorry. Three perfectly good answers there. Really surprising that at least two of those didn't make it into the top 50 of all time, but clearly they had to be massive sellers to earn that place. And unfortunately, I'm afraid you didn't find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £1,000, and that rolls over to the next show. But uh, we've loved having you on the show, and you do, of course, get to take home the pointless trophy, so very well done. Thank you. That's tough luck. Uh, you gave us three number one singles there, but none of them in the top 50, I'm afraid. Back for Good, the, probably the biggest selling over there, sold over a million copies, but nowhere near the top 50, I'm afraid. The biggest scorers, uh, you avoided all of them. Everything I do, I do it for you. Bohemian Rhapsody, Love is All Around, Do They Know It's Christmas, all of those scored quite well. But let's take a look at some of the ones that would have won you that money. I'm sure some people at home would have got a few of these. Is this the way to Amarillo? <laughs> As a pointless answer, Barbie Girl by Aqua sold nearly 1.8 million copies in the UK. Believe by Cher would have been a pointless answer. Mary's Boy Child, Boney M, well done if you said that. Release Me, Engelbert Humperdinck, Three Lions by The Lightning Seeds and Badil and Skinner, which is released every four years. Um, and is uh, <laughs> and it's as relevant today as it ever was. Two Tries by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. YMCA, Village People, You're the One That I Want, which is obviously Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. I'll give you a few more. Brown Girl in the Ring, Boney M, Careless Whisper. Day Tripper by The Beatles, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio, I Feel Fine by The Beatles, I Just Called to Say I Love You, that was pointless. Uh, oh My Lord by Boney M. Uh, Summer Nights would have been a pointless answer. Think Twice, Celine Dion. And actually, the biggest selling single of all time in the UK was sort of a pointless answer, because the biggest selling single of all time in the UK is Elton John's 1997 version of Candle in the Wind, and that was a double A-side with something about the way you look tonight. So if anybody said that, it's a terrific answer and it was pointless. Wow, so you knew some of those. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so gutted. And you might have gone for some of those. I'm so, yeah. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, David and Isabel, but we've loved having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. David and Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. Now, sadly, they didn't win today's jackpot, so it rolls over, which means on the next show, we will be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.